Could your medications silently be depleting your vitamin B1 levels? The very pills that you're taking to stay healthy and improve your health may be robbing you, robbing your body of a very important nutrient. My name is Dr. Tara Nell, and in this video, we're going to look at the pharmaceutical contributors to vitamin B1 deficiency. We're going to dive into the fascinating but often overlooked topic of how certain medications have been linked with and been shown to create vitamin B1 deficiency. This information is especially crucial because thiamine or vitamin B1 is vital for energy production and overall health. And we'll reveal some of the medications that you may be taking that can lead to thiamine deficiency. All right, let's jump into the video. So today we're going to look at pharmaceutical contributors to thiamine deficiency or B1 deficiency. And thiamine or vitamin B1 is a critical part of our energy production in our bodies. And since we need energy for basically everything that our bodies do, it's important to make sure that things that you're taking like medications are actually the cause of your thiamine deficiency. So a research study in 2012 set out to investigate the impact of medications that may lead to more incidence of thiamine deficiency. The way that this research came about is that they found that a specific type of medication, a JAK2 inhibitor, led to a severe form of thiamine deficiency called Wernicke's encephalopathy. And that was when they were using a specific JAK2 inhibitor called fedratinib. And so what the researchers did is they went back and screened over 13,000 FDA-approved compounds and identified about 146 that had some kind of inhibition of the thiamine transporter called THTR2. So what is THTR2? Well, THTR2 is thiamine transporter 2, which is encoded by a specific gene called the SLC19A3 gene. It is essential for the active transport of thiamine across cell membranes and plays a critical role in thiamine absorption from inside the lumen of the digestive tract into the bloodstream. And once it's in the bloodstream, then it transports the thiamine to different cells and tissues. And it's particularly active in the small intestine, and THTR2 helps the thiamine that's within the food enter the cells and ensures that the cells have enough thiamine in order to carry out the metabolic activities that ultimately are going to lead to ATP production. So your tissues that are more metabolically active, like the brain and the kidneys, those areas of the body are going to be particularly susceptible to thiamine deficiency, even the digestive tract itself is as well. So mutations in this particular transporter, the SLC19A3 gene, can lead to severe neurological disorders, which basically highlights the importance of this gene in maintaining adequate thiamine levels. So if you're on a medication that inhibits this transporter, it may be causing your body more trouble than it needs to be. So let's go back to the actual study content so we can explore this topic further, which pharmaceuticals might be leading to a B1 deficiency. So after identifying the medications that had inhibitory effects of this transporter, they then did a dose response assay and machine learning to predict the actual inhibitory effect on the THTR2 transported. After they had the list of medications that tended to lead to suppression of that transporter, they then used electronic health records to compare thiamine levels in patients that were on these medications versus those that were not on these medications at all. And what they found that some of these medications significantly lower thiamine levels, particularly in vulnerable populations like those with malnutrition, those with alcoholism, or those with some kind of genetic susceptibility for thiamine deficiency. So let's look at some of the medications that seem to pose the most threat on or the most possibility of leading to a thiamine deficiency. So the first one is metformin. There's also some psychiatric medications like sertraline and amitriptyline, some antibiotics as well, like metronidazole and trimethoprim, which is also one of the active ingredients in Bactrim. Hydroxychloroquine, which is an anti-malarial medication and also used for certain rheumatological conditions. 
antihypertensive or blood pressure medications like verapamil and quinidine, NSAIDs like aspirin and acetaminophen, and proton pump inhibitors. These are going to be things like omeprazole, pantoprazole, etc. So it's also important to note that some of these medications are going to be used on a less frequent basis. Like if you're taking antibiotics, for instance, those are just going to be short term and the likelihood of Thiamine deficiency from taking something that short term is very low, but others like sertraline, amitriptyline, verapamil, and proton pump inhibitors, well, these are things that people will take for years and years and years. Sometimes they take them their whole life. And so this could definitely lead to some significant issues, especially in those with, again, vulnerable populations such as genetic susceptibility already or chronic alcohol use, or some kind of malnutrition, or maybe you're just not consuming enough thiamine-rich foods. So for instance, we mentioned that the thiamine transporter is encoded by the gene SLC19A3, and it's needed in order to transport the thiamine into cells across a cell membrane. But mutations here have been shown to cause severe neurological conditions, such as thiamine metabolism dysfunction syndrome, type 2, and biotin thiamine responsive basal ganglion disease. These are severe congenital conditions, and the children that have these tend to have shorter lifespans and do not function well. There are more subtle single nucleotide polymorphisms, or SNPs, that are associated with less severe problems, but an overall decrease in the functionality of their thiamine transporter, resulting in, for instance, decreased absorption or decreased transport of that thiamine into the cells and tissues where it's needed. So if you have genetic alterations in this transporter, you may not have had necessarily overt symptoms your whole life, but as you're on medications like this longer, the symptoms of thiamine deficiency may start to manifest and be more prominent in your life. So this study and information that I'm presenting here underscores the need to consider more carefully the role of medications on our health and specifically on vitamin deficiencies and the potential for some commonly prescribed medications to contribute to vitamin deficiency, specifically thiamine deficiency. And to me, it also underscores the importance of monitoring nutrient and vitamin levels in patients as a whole, but those at risk in particular and those that have symptoms associated with deficiencies. A lot of times when we give the body back the things that it's missing, the nutrients that are missing, the vitamins that are missing, it actually does a remarkable job at healing itself and coming back into a more balanced state. So it's important to look out for these deficiencies when you are susceptible and when you're having overt symptoms of them. So if you're experiencing unexplained ongoing fatigue, mood changes, cognitive difficulties, or any of the symptoms associated with thiamine deficiency, heart palpitation sometimes, or even digestive issues, it might be worth checking your thiamine levels to see if this may be something going on with you. And remember, the gold standard test for thiamine is that transketolase activity test, which is not readily available. So even if you come out normal, you're looking for a result that's on the low side of normal. And if you're taking these medications ongoing, that's even more reason to check your levels. So if you have any questions about anything mentioned here, please drop it in the comment section. That's why I do the videos to help you understand what's going on with your body. But if you do want a more customized, usable answer, consider joining the membership program and I will have more time, more attention to dedicate to your question. One thing that you may be considering or thinking about after watching this video is what are the symptoms of thiamine deficiency? And you can find information on that right in this video here. So thank you again for watching. We will see you next time.